Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent game to share with you from the 1959 Candidates Tournament. On the white end, Bobby Fischer, playing against Palbenko. All right, on board, we have an open Sicilian, classical. Bishop c4 signals the fischer sozin attack. Two minor pieces converging currently on e6. White will look to, with this attack, invite the f-pawn into the mix, coordinating further on the e6 square, or, as is frequently the case, black pawn on e6. Benko's reply is queen b6. d4, being challenged. Trying to kick this guy away from observing e6. Fisher does react. He falls back to e2 here. Uh, if white continues to develop instead, bishop e3, for instance, uh, the b-pawn can successfully be picked up. So he goes to e2. b3 was another option, but in a way, Fisher is saying, I want to keep that square open for my bishop. And do know the c4 square for this guy is not the most stable square, so he's now able to fall back to b3, staying trained on this excellent diagonal. Now, it may appear, you know, when we consider these last two moves, uh, why isn't maybe everyone playing this anti fischer sozin variation? I mean, queen b6 is developing a piece, and white's reaction here is to demote a piece. It's not all positive, though, for black. Do know that it's now going to cost black an extra tempo before this bishop can be developed to its optimal square, b7, on the main diagonal. The queen has to first move before the pawn can move. Okay, from here, e6, castles, bishop e7, more secure square for the light square bishop. Castles, king h1. Off of the diagonal, white's ready to go, launching the f-pawn, creating a pawn duo. Follow-up, knight a5, prepared to swipe the bishop. And from here we have bishop g5. Now, I think a move that may tempt many players, um, bishop e3. Why is it tempting? Well, you're developing a piece and generating a threat. Bishop e3 with tempo. In a way, though, white could kind of reason... Uh, I know your queen wants to move anyway. Why, why should I encourage that? Why should I maybe scare your queen away to a better square? C7 would be a better square out of the b-pawn's way. So White's saying, you do that all on your own. I'm going to go to a more aggressive square with my bishop and only then follow up creating this pawn duo. Okay. In the game, it is queen c5 here. If h6, the bishop would maintain itself on this diagonal. Queen c5 in this game, very purposeful, targets the bishop in a different way, and is out of the way of the b-pawn now. White makes king h1, makes sense. f4, defending the bishop. Now, when you see f4... Uh, what's a thought that runs through your mind? I'll kind of share what I first look at. I mean, in this particular case, f4 is defending the bishop, but uh, the next thing you kind of start to look at are these possible pawn moves, e5 or even f5. Don't forget about this third aggressive idea. Now that the f-pawn has advanced, rook f3 becomes a move. This rook up and over idea is available. This shows up in many variations from here. Okay, follow up, b5, and now knight g3. Black's next move is b4. This is where we see a shift in the evaluation. Considered best is to continue developing. Bishop main diagonal opposite the king with the focus. If there's one focus here, it's that e4 square. 
Why does Black maybe not play in this way? May have been some concern about Knight h5, increasing the pressure on f6. Computer says, don't worry. Put your king in the corner and be prepared to play with doubled f pawns in case there's a capture on f6, and you're ready to go with rook to g8. Black plays in this position b4, and this knight doesn't run away scared. If you go to the edge right here, counter punching black would laugh. Put the queen on c7 and say, What are you doing next, knight? It's out of bounds. Fisher's play is a counter punch e5 on board, targeting the knight and opening up the e4 square for either knight. Black here plays d takes on e5. Let's have a look at first, though, what happens if the knight is captured. White can take on f6, and the king side is going to get uh, destroyed. They're going to end up with doubled f pawns. If we consider g takes f in this position, there's bishop h6. White's going to win the exchange soon. If you move the rook here, it's even worse. Queen g4, mate. Black would have to give up the queen. The other option. Bishop takes pawn would be met with bishop takes bishop, and then this is a crushing move, hitting everything, all these dark squares. And don't forget, now that there's a knight on g4, this is a very dangerous idea. Rook lift into g3. So this guy here, call it poison. In the game, d takes e5 it is. And now white first removes the only defender of e4. In the game, black takes with the g-pawn. Uh, what I want to have a look at first, though, are these two other captures. We're going to revisit this capture on c3 and then have a look at bishop takes on f6. So looking again in this particular case, pawn takes knight. How to continue from here? Knight e4. And there's a couple options at this stage. One that's strictly defensive, queen c7, and the other one, queen b4, attacking the knight and it's still defending the bishop. If queen c7 here, white can continue with the calm recapture on e5, being prepared to meet pawn takes bishop with pawn takes pawn, a winning attack for white with queen g4 as a follow-up. The alternative, queen b4, White can play queen g4 straight away. Bishop takes, knight takes, follow up, rook lift. This is as far as I'm going to take it. After pawn takes, knight, white would be winning in this particular case. The pawn on f6 would be poison. Okay, the other line is instead of this pawn takes, knight, to take with the bishop on f6. In this case, the knight can now go, knight from c can go to e4, queen e7 to defend the bishop, and now knight h5 is the very best, increasing the pressure here, threatening to take with the e4 knight, and then sweep in with queen g4 check, queen g7 checkmate. Considered best here for black would be bishop h4, and this is as far as I'm going to take this line. Where is a very popular location for a car accident? An intersection. And right here, F6, you could very easily see an accident happen in this position. Any one of these three pieces diving in here, you could see it. Especially with this pawn around supporting. Upon recapturing on F6, it's like having a piece on F6. Excellent position for white. In this game, it's g takes f6. Now white saves the knight with tempo. Queen goes to d4 in this game. This is now a winning position for white. If black is to apparently stay in the game, queen has to go to c7. I'm just going to play out a few moves with this line. It runs much deeper. It says queen h5 and after takes rook f3. Prepare to recapture on g3 with the rook. Looking next for rook h3. 
Again, it runs deeper, something with queen e5, queen h6, knight h5 moves. Okay, this general idea. Keep it in mind, rook lift towards the king side. In this game, it is queen d4. Black is saying, can we please get the queens off? My king is in danger. White says, nice try. Oh, thank you. Queen h5 on board. And the follow-up here is knight takes bishop. Now, there is a beautiful line here I have to highlight. And that is, if black in this position captures on f4, I wonder if you can spot what the very best move is. Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the recapture on f4 would not be it. If white takes on f4 here, black is able to play f5, and two key things are happening with f5. The bishop's eyes are opened, as well as the queen's. There's no rook h4 anymore. Bishop takes rook is there. And in the event of knight g5 threatening mate, the queen could fall back to g7. Black is successfully defending. Black is considered winning here. The best move in this position here for white is this star move, knight f5. What is knight f5 doing? It's freezing this f6 pawn. It's buying white enough time to get a rook lift in towards the h-file. How would this look? Currently, white is threatening a check, checkmate. So queen takes knight, forget about it. If you take the knight, now this rook can take on f4. And because this pawn is here, this pawn is frozen, there's no time to move this pawn out of the queen or bishop's way. How might this look? Pawn takes knight, rook h4, there's no defense. White's crashing through on h7. Bishop f5, we scoop up the bishop. Eventually queen h7, queen h8. Game over. What a beautiful move this would be. It's almost like you wanted to see uh, this move actually happen in the game. Pawn takes on f4, followed up with knight f4. Very rare to see quad f pawns. All right. In this game, it is knight takes bishop. Who cares about this rook? Who cares about spending any time to grab this queenside knight? The king side here is on fire. Queen h6 going straight in for the kill. Knight h5 and mate on g7 is the threat. Black takes on f4 here. Knight h5 follow up. There's only one way to defend g7. Black is there in time to play f5. Now, if you jump into f6 here straight away, it's not going to be winning for white. In the game, rook a to d1 is played. If you immediately go in, we would have these captures. Black has to take the knight, otherwise it's mate. And this position here, it considers it uh, just about a half pawn advantage for white. Not winning. But a simple move here. No rush jumping into f6, why not save the rook and try and deflect the queen from her defensive role? Only after rook a to d1 kicking the queen to e5 does Fisher hop into f6. Now he picks up the queen and has more material. It's a queen versus two minor pieces position, and he continues by winning uh, even more material from here. We have an unprotected knight. He can target it right now with queen to e7, but says, let's first flick in a check, kick the king away from defending the rook, and now play queen e7, targeting in this case two unprotected pieces. White wins more material. In this case, it's going to be two minor pieces for a rook, this one goes no further. Benko resigns. 
queen versus rook position. And on top of it, the black king is without a safe shelter. So there's no hope here for team black. Anyhow, what did you think of this one? Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.